here from my summer home because it's holiday time and that means that Digital DJ Tips HQ is locked. Uh, we keep nipping back there for things that we've forgotten. But the idea is that we're taking our kind of summer summer break. Uh, and uh, so this is the summer school. This is uh, every week throughout July and August. I'll be presenting our usual Tuesday tips live but from a different location, knocking around somewhere in the Mediterranean, usually from my bedroom, which is actually where I've hidden myself now. The family are out there having holiday, having holiday times, and I've stashed myself away to bring you Tuesday Tips Live. So hello, welcome to everyone watching. If you don't know who we are, I'm Phil Morse. I'm the guy behind Rock the Dance Floor, which is one of the best-selling books on Amazon that teaches you how to DJ. Now, every single person who joins Digital, Digital DJ Tips for free gets a copy of this book. So if you are not in our group if you're not in our community then head over to digitaldjtips.com at any time and click any of the banners that say join there's one at the top of the page to start with we'll give you a copy of the book you can download it for free and as i say it's an amazon bestseller on how to dj it covers everything gear music techniques playing out promoting yourself so that's who we are that's what we do we're here to help you become better djs and better dj producers that's one way we do it another way we do it is with our youtube channel with our free videos on there also with our free tutorials over on digital dj tips and our reviews of gear and all that stuff but we also do it with Tuesday Tips Live, uh, and that's what this is. It's the Tuesday Tips Live Summer School Edition right now. So today, we're talking about five ways to go from local to global in your DJing. So it's really exciting, uh, especially if you've played a few gigs and you're starting to get the hang of it and you want to push further. So I'll talk you through some interesting ways. I'll talk you through how all of us here at Digital DJ Tips have broken through to play internationally, and hopefully you'll get some ideas. If you're watching this on the replay, you probably weren't subscribed to our channel and you weren't getting notifications from YouTube or Facebook. So subscribe on YouTube, click the allow notifications bell. And if you're on Facebook, make sure you like our page and also make sure that you allow our comments to come in first. It's a little setting. Uh, if you're watching on the Global DJ Network, you are the best of the best. That rapidly expanding network group for DJs is an amazing place and you're very privileged to be in there. I'm glad you're watching us on there. If you don't know what I'm talking about, well, I might, if I have time, just fill you in later about how you can get in the Global DJ Network as well. It's an, awful, an awful, awesome group for DJs by DJs that, uh, that you need to be in if you're not already in it. Anyway, can't do everything in every broadcast. So if you're new to this, you know what it's about now. If you're watching the replay, you know how to watch these live. If you're watching on YouTube thinking, I want my five tips, why is this guy going on and on and on? You are watching a recording of a live show. These last about half an hour. There's a lot of interaction with the audience. We go through this as if you were, um, you know, as if you were with me in a room and we had lots of people and backwards and forwards. So it's not a five minute YouTube video, right? So sorry about that. That's what these are. You're watching a recording. Uh, but hopefully you're one of the people with us live. A few early hellos. Hello to Avinav and DJ Mark. One, oh, Mark, always good to have you here on Facebook. Hi to Neil on Facebook. Again, always good. Uh, hi to Jeff and Alex and Willie and um, Taiwan on Facebook. Uh, hello to Michael, Stephanie, uh, to James, to Willie, uh, to, to Wilfredo, who's in Puerto Rico. Awesome. Uh, again, all on Facebook and over on our YouTube channels. We've got DJ Eric G says, what's up, Phil? Real Life Radio Online says, hello. Rajul, always good to have you here, Rajul. Hello to you. Uh, Arjun says, hi. Hi to DJ Dash. Always good to have you. We're about to get schooled, says DJ Dash. Indeed you are. DJ Foxy T. Lots of names is popping up who I'm used to seeing here which is awesome hi to Steph, uh, Stephen John Kevin uh, all over on YouTube awesome so we've got a full house already let's get started today we're talking about five ways that you can go from local to global in your DJing so number one you need to get gigs outside your comfort zone so the top DJs are always pushing themselves. They're always taking things where they could fall flat on their face. They're always trying new things. And it's very easy in DJing or indeed in anything in life to get into your comfort zone and then stay there. You get a residency in your local bar. The bar owner knows that you're going to do a good job. The, resident, uh, the other resident DJs are your friends. The crowd know you and like you. It all becomes easy. And you're, you're the man or the woman. You're loving it. It's all working well. But guess what? As soon as you're standing still, you're actually going backwards. And unfortunately, um, 
the truth is that success isn't always the best teacher. Being good at something and being there and just going through the motions, isn't. you're not really learning anything. So the best DJs take gigs that frighten them. Now, sometimes people say, well, I only want to take gigs in my sub-genre, doing my thing and so on. As you get bigger as a DJ, that becomes more relevant. But frankly, when you're starting out, you should be taking gigs that really stretch your horizons for so many reasons. But one of the big ones is you learn from those gigs that stretch you. And if you don't believe me that big DJs take gigs that stretch them uh, and that often mean that they might fall flat on their face. I had a wonderful conversation with Laidback Luke about this. By the way, our course that we're making with Laidback Luke is now coming very soon. I'll tell you at the end how you can pre-register your interest in that. Uh, I was talking to Laidback Luke about this and he was telling me he played a massive stadium gig. I think it was in New Zealand. It might be in Australia. A uh, massive stadium gig. And he said, like, nothing was working. He said he prepared hard for it. He got all his tunes ready. He'd got the genres he wanted to try. He said nothing was working. And he was playing, he was literally just trying everything. Uh, he was trying the tune, you know, he's thinking back through his hundreds of gigs. This always works, didn't work. Well, this is bound to work, didn't work. This is new and it's awesome, didn't work. This is old and everyone knows it, didn't work. He said in the end, he had to play We Will Rock You by Queen. And when he dropped We Will Rock You by Queen, the stadium went wild. And then all of a sudden, he had them. And then he could take them through the laid back loop moves. But he said... I was very, very frightened. I was very outside my comfort zone. And I learned a lot on that night. And that is a good example of how you ought to think about pushing yourself in your gigs. The only way you're going to become good enough to go from local to global is by taking gigs that frighten you. So point number one is taking gigs outside your comfort zone. So we've got four more to come in our how to go from local to global five steps. Uh, but before we go any further, as always, I want to pop over and see uh, some com comments here. Watch out, Phil. There's someone behind you, says the DJ stuff. I'm in my bedroom and there might well be someone behind me. I've got two young kids. They always hang out by the door or the window trying to get involved in live streams. It's your YouTube generation, isn't it? Um, uh, Anton the DJ says, true, I'm taking mobile gigs to get used to different genres. Mobile gigs are a great way to really push yourself. Uh, they really are. People who kind of put down mobile DJing and say, oh, it's easy. Oh, it's, you know, you try playing a mobile gig and get, getting everyone from grandmas to four-year-old kids dancing. It's not easy. So that's a really good, uh, that's a really good point there. So thank you for that. Um, I learned that over the weekend, says uh, Stephanie. I'd love to know what you did, Stephanie, uh, to learn that over the weekend, but that's cool. Um, all right then. Um, so uh, um, Bjorn, Bjorn says, you can never go wrong with Queen. Well, there you go. You can never go wrong with Queen. Um, so it depends on the gig, I suppose. But it certainly worked for Luke on that particular day. Um, so, all right then. Um, we're talking through the five or our five steps for going from local to global in your DJing. We've already had number one, which is take gigs outside your comfort zone. Do stuff that frightens you. Uh, so number two is um, think regional or national before international. So don't think, oh, I've got a really good residency in my local club. You know, it's time to start getting gigs in Sydney, Australia, or in Manila, or in New York, right? Um, depending on where you're from originally, right? Um, it's best to think national or regional first. So there's lots of reasons for this. You can conquer the next town more easily than the next country, right? So there's DJs where I'm from in Manchester in England. There are DJs who play in Manchester in England, but they also play in Liverpool and Leeds and Sheffield. So this is a region now. It's not just a city, but you don't need to be a global name to get gigs in other areas in your region or indeed your country. You understand the culture. You understand the way it works. You probably know people in those cities or those towns or those states. And so just that networking effect is sometimes enough to get you gigs without being a superstar and a public name, right? So if you can think regional past local, it's a great step towards ultimately playing internationally and playing globally. Um, you know, a, a really good um, example of this is Mark, our, uh, our content creator at Digital DJ Tips, uh, Digital DJ Tips Mark. Uh, and Mark is a Las Vegas resident, but through expanding his Vegas network, doing a good job, getting to know people, he now plays regularly across the USA. He's often doing his work from New York because he's got gigs in New York for a week or whatever. You know, Mark isn't a big um, worldwide well-known producer, uh, DJ producer type who can just take gigs anywhere in the world. But Mark is playing far, far wider than Vegas, where he's from. Uh, through networking, through conquering adjacent places, through playing regionally as well as internationally. So if you can think 
you know, what's my next step and make it a bit smaller than <laughs> my town, the world. Uh, look at that step in between. That's a good way of um, moving your gigging up and also getting gigs that will challenge and frighten you, right? Uh, that's more achievable than than going global straight off. So, um, so John says, I stay in Scotland, but I've done weekends to Newcastle as well. That was an experience. So for those of you who are not from the UK, Newcastle is the other side of the border down south from Scotland. Um, so cool. Nice to hear that. Um, so more thumbs up for doing mobile gigs. John says, I do mobile gigs sometimes. I prefer them to pubs or clubs. There's always, they're always different and there's always a challenge. Uh, so isn't that true? They, they, you know, it's what we're saying. That, that is definitely the case. Um, okay. Uh, Christopher says, only dead fish go with the flow. I've never heard that before, but I quite like that, Christopher. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Kim says, I've been trying out some music that I really hate. The audience goes wild, so I know what you're on about. Uh, the funny thing is, the more you mix with styles and genres that you think you don't like, the more you actually realise what they're all about. Um, so it expands your horizons in that way. Um, so... Um, so Simon says uh, kind of the opposite to that. Once you have the crowd, you do need to stick to your style. To an extent, that's right, Simon. But it takes, you know, by the time you're at the size in your DJ where people expect something of you and that's what you've got to do, um, you've got a different set of problems to the ones we're discussing here, right? Because you're you're kind of becoming a household name. Uh, so, um, so DJ Dash says, for me... Uh, I dived into weddings. I was very nervous, but now those are my favorite gigs. Now I don't even like to do bar gigs very much. Well, there you go. You never know until you until you try, do you? Uh, so, um, so all right. Um, Bjorn says, "Be the king of your neighborhood before taking on the world." Uh, yeah, it's a it's a good way of putting it. Thank you for giving me great words to teach this stuff in the future, people. Um, so, um, jo uh, Jose or Jose says, "Doing live videos on social media helps expand your brand uh, locally and regionally as well." So that's really good, and uh, lots more thumbs up for mobile gigs coming in here. Uh, Martin says, "I've been doing." Mobile gigs for years, it does teach you a lot. Currently, I've got a bar gig playing house, which I love, but if it's not working, the mobile experience really helps me to know what to do. Uh, so cool, thank you very much for that. And Cassandra says, uh, I've, oh, well, that's not Cassandra. Uh, if you don't have a good promoter, you don't have a chance, says Lee. Well, that can be true, but then again, there are ways of getting gigs without having a promoter promoting you, which I'll talk about in a bit. Uh, DJ Dash says, uh, I've only been doing private parties for a year now, and I keep beating myself over the head for having not done it sooner. So there you go. And uh, Cassandra says, uh, just book a gig that I thought would only be 30 people. Now it's a public event, 1,000 expected to attend. A little nervous, yeah, but I bet you're excited as well, Cassandra. All right, then, we're talking about five ways to get gigs regionally and internationally from currently playing locally, right? So number one is um, to step outside your comfort zone, take stuff that frightens you. Number two is to take that step, local, regional, then international. Don't think you can kind of go from one to the other. It does happen, but it's quite rare to go from, from just local corner, corner club DJ to, to, to world domination. Uh, step number three is an obvious one, but we have to say it, release your own music. So releasing music is like a calling card to getting gigs all over the world. Releasing music means that your music does your promoting for you. By the time you get to cities, people know who you are. And you've got to understand that promoters are risk managers, basically. They're managing the risk for the venue they promote in. You put money, you put time, you put effort into an event, You've got to make sure that there are people through the door, right? And the best way to get people through the door is to book DJs that people know. And nowadays that means to book DJs who have made music that people know. So making music is important, but it doesn't have to be that Beatport number one, that hallowed production of your own. If you are a DJ who's quite eclectic and you're always discovering tracks other people have forgotten, you could just remix an old track and be known for your remix of an old track. You could just be making re-edits and mashups and giving them to other DJs. There's a lot of DJs in some scenes who literally just re-edit old stuff. The new disco scene was built around that. The breakbeat scene in the uh, early 2000s was built around that. People taking old stuff and making it sound all right for their scene. You know, you can get a name for yourself that way. So you don't have to be producing your own music, but certainly producing versions of music or remixes or re-edits that people are playing. One of our students, um, Simo J, John Simpson, he, uh, he um, 
remixed a track by Naughty Boy uh, just for his own DJ sets and he sent it to DJ City and they liked it and they put it on their promo only uh, pool and he went to Ibiza on holiday and he went to Privilege in Ibiza uh, which is a club I want to talk to you about in a minute and he just went on holiday and he went to see Naughty Boy DJing because he likes the guy uh, and this club is the biggest club in the world it's like packed 10,000 10, 10, people in there or whatever and Naughty Boy comes on stage and he plays Simo's remix as his first track. Now, how do you think Simo felt then? Good, right? That was his music going ahead of him. Now, he wasn't playing that night or anything, but I thought it was a nice story to illustrate how just a re-edit or a, re or, or a remix of something can get you on the map. So um, trying to produce your own music in some way, shape or form is a tested method. Now, of course, this is the way most DJs break through. Uh, and um, that's, that's why. It's because nowadays being a DJ producer is kind of expected when you reach a certain level. Um, all right, then. Let's. Um, ha By the way, that doesn't mean you, you shouldn't do mixtapes. You should definitely make mixtapes, but they're, they're not genuinely enough to get you gigs outside your local area nowadays. Um, all right, then. So lots and lots and lots of comments. Thank you very much for those people. Let's share a few of those. Ali says, in my experience, getting gigs away from local hometowns was much more successful than local. The, uh, then the local promoters realise you're going out of town and working crowds abroad. Also, local promoters are less likely to treat you the way an out-of-town promoter would, i.e. for the worst. So that's interesting. Ali found that when uh, Ali got gigs outside um, of, of home, that the local promoters were more kind of respectful. So that's an interesting angle. I've, I've, uh, I've not heard that one before. Really good that you shared that. Uh, Jose says, I do local places to include weddings and corporate events. It is a challenge, but it's worth it. At the end of the day, they want your business. For me, I do my best to go all out. Be open-minded to play other genres you don't normally do. Also be creative to add to your niche. So thank you very much for that. Um, so, um, all right then, uh, more, uh, more questions or more feedback coming in. Uh, and I'm just quickly scanning because this is all live. So I'm scanning your live comments and picking some comments that I think would be uh, would be worth sharing. Robert says, uh, big well-known cities are saturated with DJs. Try less well-known places. Uh, that is always a good tactic. Um, so, uh, all right, any more comments that I want to share right now? No, I think we're going to move on to point number four out of five. So if you've just joined us, we're talking about five ways to go from local to global. We've already said, um, get outside your comfort zone, play gigs that scare you, um, play regionally or nationally before you play internationally, release music. Number four, get a job in the music industry. Now this is a tried and tested way of getting gigs all over the world. I'll give you a couple of examples. DJ Angelo, who is one of our uh, tutors at Digital DJ Tips in our scratching course. DJ Angelo is a product representative for uh, Reloop and DJ Angelo gets to play in I, I see him every year when I'm in Vegas uh, sorry in um, Los Angeles um, I see him when I'm in Frankfurt I see him in the UK I see him all over the place he's there representing Reloop and he's gigging there as well in the evenings uh, as he demos their gear at the DJ shows in the daytime and so on there's one example of how getting a job in the music industry can get you gigs another example our scratch tutor Steve Canueto he got a job mixing compilation CDs for Ministry of Sound in the 90s. So any of you old enough to remember that when they had millions selling the Ministry of Sound annual and the Clubber's Bible and stuff, Steve actually mixed a lot of those. And Steve's networking with the DJs and with the producers in order to produce these uh, these mixed CDs got him gigs all over Europe. He played in Italy and uh, he's got some great stories about the gigs that he got directly off the back of that job in the music industry. So if you can get a job in a area of the music industry that can open you to networking with people who will hear your DJing and possibly get your openings, then that could be a great way of doing it as well. So um, just quick scan for comments. Uh, DJ Big Scully says, uh, marketing and branding yourself is the easiest way to get your name out worldwide. Um, so Andrew says, I've been a bedroom DJ for years. Uh, for starters, I'd like a local gig, but how? Put your own event on, Andrew. Just promote a tiny bar that holds 20 people. Get 10 people in, do it again the week after and the week after and grow from there. Um, but promoting yourself is the way to get gigs when no one will book you. Uh, Ali says, I, I, I suggest writing for a dance music magazine. Not only is it helpful to have magazine credit under your name when you get booked, but you get promos from record labels as well. At least you do in my experience, which is a great tip. I started um, way years ago writing for dance music and editing, in fact, music magazines as well. So I totally, um, totally uh, get that. Jeremy says, hi, Phil, just joining. So for all those of you like Jeremy, you should have watched this at the beginning. Subscribe, notify. 
click all the links and stuff and that way you'll be able to watch this from the beginning uh, every time. By the way, if you're enjoying this, please do hit share um, because it really helps us to get this stuff out there and helps us to do this. We, you know, this is a, a free thing we do every week, but it really does help us if you can pay us back by sharing this uh, wherever you're watching it. So thanks for that. All right, so let's move on to number five out of our five. By the way, those of you who are asking uh, about the Laid Back Luke course, which I said to uh, tease a little bit earlier, I'll tell you all about what's happening with that uh, at the end. It's now very close, which is very exciting. We've made a course with Laid Back Luke. Uh, all right then, so number five, barter. Barter your services. Let me explain what I mean by this. So, an example is me, actually. I got to play, you know, I was mentioning earlier that um, our, our student Simo J went to Privilege in Ibiza, the biggest club in the world. He heard one of his heroes, Naughty Boy, DJing there. Uh, well, I've DJed there as well, in the main room, in front of all those thousands of people. It was, a, it was in the Guinness Book of Records as the biggest club in the world. It's a huge place. Um, how did I get to DJ there? I never produced any music. I only produced music for fun at home. You know, I didn't have a big beat port hit or whatever. You know, I, was a, I was basically what I've always referred to as a super resident. I was a hyper successful resident DJ getting gigs all over the place on the back of the name I had from the nightclub that I promoted back in the day. Uh, that's how I kind of got my name out there. But bartering your services is a great way to get gigs. So let me explain you how I got explain to you how I got that gig of privilege. That was the best example. I did it hundreds of times, well certainly scores of times, but that was the best one I ever did. Let me tell you how I did it. I ran a, a small but well-respected nightclub um, in my home city of Manchester and I was the resident DJ. I also promoted it with my with my business partner uh, and we had queues around the block and, you know, we booked all our favourite DJs, but we were basically the residents uh, and that was our gig. Uh, and I booked the resident DJ at a very successful night at Privilege in Ibiza at that time to come and play my, my club. And he loved it so much. He's like, this is brilliant. I love it. It's amazing what you've got here. You've got to come and play my club. Um, bring your crowd with you. Come and play my club. And we're like, yeah, okay, we'll come and play your club. So we told our venue, you know, we're having, we're all going to Ibiza. Um, and, um, and we did. We got 40, 50 people, came all the way from rainy Manchester in England, all the way down to Ibiza in the Mediterranean. Uh, and... Um, they, they, he, he booked us that night and we were, we were the guests in his club that night. Uh, and that's how I got to play in front of all those people. And it's called a resident swap. You literally say, I'm a resident DJ here. You're a resident DJ there. Do you want to swap? And you can barter. There's no money has to change hands. You just, you just do it that way. It's a tried and tested way. It's also how I got to play for you too at their club, The Kitchen in Dublin. Uh, and I played there a lot on, on the basis of that. I got became very friendly with their resident DJ. We just swapped gigs like once a month for uh, at one point where we're doing that. Uh, so yeah, bartering your services. If you've taken the time to build up a scene or a club or a name in your city and you can get gigs for people from out of town in your city, well, they can repay the favour, right? That's a really, really good way of doing it if you're lucky enough to have a successful residency where you are. All right, so they're my five tips. What I've yet to tell you about is the imminent, now, the imminent release of the Laid Back Loop course that we have for you. So I'll tell you about that in a minute. Before I do that, I just want to recap these five, uh, these five steps and also read out some of your comments. So the five steps to taking your DJing, that's 10, to taking your DJing uh, from local to global are um, get outside your comfort zone, take gigs that scare you, um, play regionally or nationally before internationally, do it step by step, um, release music, um, get a job in the music industry and barter your services. If you're already successful where you are, barter those services with someone in the places you want to play. Um, okay, so I've also given you examples. I've told you how Steve has done it here. I've told you how Luke's done it here. I've told you how I've done it. I've told you how Mark's done it. Uh, so lots and lots of, uh, of ideas for you there, I hope. Um, so Alex says, I started... DJing my own goth night, so I'm always getting gigs. Shame I'm a bad employer and I don't pay myself. I just plough any money I'll make back into the event. Well, good on you. It will, I'm sure it'll all pay back in the end. James says, awesome tips as always. Thank you very much for that, James. Um, so hundreds of you commenting. It's really nice to, to see that. So thank you very much. Um, so Matt says, please do something about social media. It's the only side I need help on. Well, we do teach social media in our um, Complete DJ course, Matt. Uh, but... Um, uh, but yeah, that's one place that you can find out about that. Uh, all right, any more comments? Uh, I don't want to keep, keep you waiting too long for what I've got to tell you because it is pretty exciting. No, let's move on because uh, uh, we've already been here quite a while. I know some of you are dipping out of your jobs to be here. Awesome, good on you. All right then, so this 
is what we're talking about there. <laughs> Laid back Luke's creative DJing course. This is now a thing. Uh, it's been months and months in the making. It's taken us many, many months to plan this with Luke and his people. Uh, equally, this has taken uh, quite a long time to film uh, and it's taken quite a long time to edit and get perfect. But guess what? It's finished and it's ready. Laid back Luke's creative DJing course, a partnership between Luke and us, is now ready to go live. And indeed, very, very soon, you'll be able to have a look at this and decide if it's something that you wanna take. It's all Luke's secrets revealed, and he's never done anything like this before. Uh, obviously, he's very excited about this, but so are we. So this is coming very soon. Now, uh, all details will be with you as soon as we're ready to release them. We're just dotting the I's and crossing the T's with Luke's people right now. But what we do have for you is this. If you go to djtips.co slash Luke, you can pre-register your interest in this course. Uh, you're not buying it or anything, you're just telling us, I want to know about it, I want to know about it. As soon as this is available, I want to know about it. And you really do want to do that. And the reason you want to do that is that we're going to have a really good launch offer on it. Now, it's going to be a limited offer, uh, but we are going to have a launch offer. So if you pre-register your interest, then we can let you know immediately that this is available so you don't miss that launch offer. It's a really, we've never done anything like this before, uh, so we're really looking forward to bringing it to you. We think it's one of the best things we've ever done. And of course, for Luke, it's amazing because he finally gets to get all this out there. And I'm sure those of you who know and like Luke know he's such a teacher anyway, but we've taken it to a new level with him for this course. So if you're interested in this, um, then this is how to uh, sign up. Go to djtips.co, not .com, .co, djtips.co slash Luke. My team will put it beneath us uh, somewhere, I'm sure, or put it in the description or something like that so you can see that link as well. But we're really excited about this and we hope you like it. And it's imminent. Very, very soon it's coming. So, um, so we're done, folks. Any final chat? Any final comments? I'll just read one or two out, then we have to go off. Um, so... Um, so creative DJing is my favorite style, says Travis. I'm super excited about this. That's, of course, about the Luke course. Um, so um, Ian, uh, I think it's Ian. Let's have a look. I am Mikey. Sorry, I am Mikey. Uh, Mike Ashman says, when you DJ internationally, what safety tips should you consider from equipment and payment? Well, that's a big uh, that's a big question. Payment, just make sure you've got a contract, it's signed. You know, there's always a risk, uh, but make sure you've got a contract and it's signed and you've got all your tickets and your hotel and your transfers paid and you've got at least some of the money ahead of time. Um, and as far as equipment goes, generally, if you're in any country that uh, DJs play in regularly, you shouldn't have any problems with equipment. I've, I've never had any issues with safety of equipment when I've played internationally. Um, DJ Dash says the last, oh, let's get rid of that one first. The last uh, comment let me just try and get rid of that comment. This is an awesome system, but only if you have one on at a time. The last tip can also apply to going out to different DJs in the local scene and telling them you can fill in for sick days. Yeah, so that was my tip about bartering your services. Yeah, it's just about networking really, isn't it? Um, and one more comment before we go. This one is from, let's have a look and find a good one. Um, this is from Bjorn who says, Gig swaps really work. Also, helping other nights by promoting them and getting fans to those parties will make you look good. It's true, you know, this is, it is a small world and it is a small scene. And anything you pay forward, anything you give, anything you're generous with, anything you invest in will come back to you in the end. It's really worth pointing that out. Uh, so anything you can do to promote your scene, to promote the DJs in your scene, is going to lead to opportunities for you as well. I guess that's another way of looking at this. Um, you know, you've, if you want to be accepted by a scene and to get something from it, you've got to be a good citizen of that scene in the first place, right? So, so get involved. Don't just expect it to come to you on a plate. Right. We're done. Uh, thank you very, very much to everyone who has been here today. It's been awesome. I'll give you that URL one more time, digitaldjtips.com slash Luke, if you're interested in this course, which is coming imminently uh, between us and Luke. Meanwhile, guys and girls, get good, get out there and make the moments. And I'll see you again next week for another Tuesday Tips Live. Finally, share, like, follow. Please do that stuff. It helps us to do this for you. See you later. Bye-bye.